Welcome back, I'm still talking about the decision trees and in this video I will be discussing the CART algorithm. Now the CART algorithm is just a method uh, to build decision trees in practice. And CART stands for classification and regression trees. Now, to understand what the CART algorithm does, let's first start by looking at a problem. So when we have a numerical feature, what we do is that we ask a question about its value. For example, I can say, is f1 higher than 10? And I can have here two possible answers, either yes or no. And based on these two answers, I can take a decision about the class. Now this is called a feature, and this is called the threshold. Let me write it down. This is feature, and this is a threshold that is used to separate the data into two subsets. But now the problem is how to know which feature to use to ask a question about. Because I may have more than one feature, I can have f1, f2, and f3. So in this case, why I did choose f1 instead of f2. Also, about the threshold, why did I chose the value 10 instead of another value, for example 5 or 15. So this is what the CART algorithm can identify. It can identify the peer features fi, or rather the peer fi and uh, the peer feature threshold that could separate the, our data in the best way. Now, before talking about how the CART algorithm works, we need to understand something that is important because it's a prerequisite for the CART algorithm, of course. It's called the impurity of a node. So we need to evaluate the impurity of a node. To understand that, let's consider this example. Let's say that I gathered 100 samples that contain 50 bananas and 50 lemons. And then what I do is I ask a question about the length. So I said, is the length higher than 10 centimeters? Well, in this case, this is the feature and this is the threshold. Well, if yes, I assume that this is a banana. Otherwise, I say, well, this is a lemon. Now, let's say that, well, in the beginning, I have one, my 100 samples in this node. And let's say that I got 60 samples here and 40 samples here. And out of these 60 samples, I got 40 bananas, and of course, I need to get here 20 lemons. And here, out of these 40 samples, I got 10 bananas and 30 lemons. Well, in that case, what I say is that this leaf is not pure. Why? This leaf is not pure because it contains two classes. It contains 40 bananas and 20 lemons. And the same thing is true here. Now let me give you another example where a leaf can be pure. So let's say that instead of getting 40 bananas and 20 lemons, they got, say, for example, 50 samples in this node, or in this leaf node, and out of these 50 samples they have 50 bananas and 0 lemons. Similarly here, I, get, I got here in this leaf 50 samples, and out of these 50 samples obviously I would get 0 bananas and 50 lemons. Well in that case, 
I say that this leaf is pure because it contains only one class, right? And the same thing is true here. This leaf here of lemon is pure because it contains only one class. I have 50 lemons and zero bananas. Now the first step is to evaluate the impurity of a leaf. How do we evaluate the impurity of a leaf? Well, there are two metrics for that. To evaluate the impurity of a leaf, I can either use the Gini impurity or the entropy impurity. So these are the two metrics that are widely used in decision trees. But in my case, I would focus only on the Gini impurity. So the Gini impurity is given by 1 minus the summation of probabilities squared such that i, this is i, and i starts from 0, or rather 1, to n. And n in this case represents the number of classes, and pi is the probability of appearance of a given class, right? So now, if I want to measure, for example, in this first case, let's focus only on this result here, where I have 60 samples and 40 samples, and out of these 60 samples, I have 40 bananas and 20 lemons, and so on. So if I want to measure the Gini impurity of the left node, I would write 1 minus the probability of appearance of bananas in this case, which is 40 by <coughs> 60 squared, minus the probability of appearance of lemons, which is 20 divided by 60, and this must be squared. And of course, the same thing is true on the right node. The Gini impurity of the right node, or the right leaf here, is equal to 1 minus the probability of appearance of bananas, which is 10 divided by 40, and minus the probability of appearance of lemons, which is 30 by 40, and this, of course, should be squared. So this is how we calculate the Gini purity of a given leaf. And the thing is, when a leaf is pure, what I get is a Gini purity that is equal to zero, right? So now let's compute. This is this is of course this is this would be different than zero. This would be higher than zero. You can check that out by yourself. Uh, now what I would do is what I want to do is to calculate the Gini purity in the case where the nodes are pure, that is, I have here 50 samples, and out of 50, the 50 samples, I have 50 bananas. And the same thing here, I want to evaluate the Gini impurity of this right node, where I have 50 samples, and out of these 50 samples, I have 50 lemons and 0 bananas, right? So the Gini impurity in this case would be, of the left node, would be 1 minus 50, divided by 50, this is probability of appearance of bananas, and of course I have here zero lemons, it means that the probability of appearance of lemons is just zero. And the same thing is true on the right node, I have the Gini impurity of the right node is 1 minus 50 divided by 50 squared, and this is obviously zero, because the leaves are pure, right? So now I have the impurity of the, the, the left leaf and the, the impurity of the right leaf. Now the question is, how do I evaluate the impurity of the node where I have the question? Well, it's just the summation, the impurity, the Gini impurity of a given node, which is of course, which depends upon the length and the threshold is equal to the Gini impurity of the left node plus the Gini impurity of the right node. But of course I need to weight these impurities. So I need to multiply here by the weight of samples 
and also here multiply by the weight of samples, right? So uh, just to give you an idea about how to compute these weights here, in this case, I have here 60 samples out of 100 samples. This means that the weight in the left node would be 60 by 100, which is 0.6. The same thing is true here. I have here 50, or rather 40 samples out of 100 samples. So I divide 40 by 100 and I get 0 0.4 for the weight of the right node. Now let me write this again. The Gini impurity of a given node is equal to the weight of the left node multiplied by the Gini impurity of the left node plus the weight of the right node multiplied by the Gini impurity of the right node and what you need to know here <coughs> sorry what you need to know here is that the Gini impurity of a given node depends upon two parameters the first is the feature fi and the second is the threshold so in that case the feature is the length and the threshold is 10 and the thing is when the Gini impurity, when the impurity of this node increases, when the impurity increases, this means that the quality of separation decreases. And when the impurity decreases, this means that the quality of the separation increases. Therefore, what, we, what the CART algorithm does is that it finds, for a given data set, it finds the pair Fi and Th that would yield the best possible separation. We want to increase the quality of the separation. This means that we have to decrease the impurity of the node. And since the impurity of the node is measured with this formula, then what we want to do is to minimize this function. So in, that, in other words, this is just a cost function of the CART algorithm. So now let me give you a concrete example about how the CART algorithm would use that. So let's say that I have two features, F1 and F2. And let's consider the following distribution of my data set. Let's say that this color represents the first class and again this color, the green color, represents the second class. So what the current algorithm would do in this case it, it, is that it would search for the pair Fi, Thi, this is the feature and this is the threshold, that would minimize this cost function because minimizing this cost function yields the best separation. Well, if we want to work that out, it's obvious that the best peer Fi Th is this one. This is the best separation that it can get. So this is Th1. And after that, of course, when I divide my data set, I get two subsets, this is the first subset, and this is the second subset, and what I do is I do the same thing, I apply the same logic, I just try to minimize this cost function for the first subset, and again minimize the cost function for the second subset. When I do that, I get the following separation here, this is the second threshold, right? The second peer is TH2, F2. Now the question is, when would the CART algorithm stop? That is the convergence of the CART algorithm. Well, by default, by default, the CART algorithm would stop when the leaves are pure. That is, the leaves contain only one class. In other words, the CART algorithm would stop when a given subset contains only one class, so in that case, for example, this subset contains only one class, and again, this subset here contains only the green class, and this subset here contains only the green class, so there is no need to further separate the data, 
And I say, well, this is the best separation that I can get, right? So this is how the current algorithm works. And of course, it is possible to define other conditions of um, convergence for the current algorithm because when we let the current algorithm just separate the data as it wants, then you get a problem of overfitting the data. This is another topic that I would probably discuss in the next videos. Now, what I want to say is that the current algorithm works only when we have a Boolean node. What does that mean? It means that a given node must have only two possible answers. Like this one, for example. I'm asking about the length. Is the length higher than 10 centimeters? I have here either yes or no. This is a Boolean node. But if I have a node like this one, that has three possible answers. For example, I'm asking a question about if one. I say, is if one higher than 10? Is if one smaller than five? Is if one equal 100? So I have here three possible answers. So in that case, the cart algorithm would not work and we would need another algorithm that is called ID. Right? So this is what you need to know. The cart algorithm works only when we have a node that is Boolean, otherwise it would not work.